I like this pattern because part way through. Welcome to the studio. Come on in. Welcome to the studio. I'm Michelle. And I'm Linda. And we are from Color Me Happy Fiber Arts. And if you are new here, this is a show where we talk about naturally dyeing yarn and fiber, all the things we're excited about and things we're working on, um, both with our natural dyes and um, what we're knitting or spinning and how we're using those. So if you're new, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back and thanks for watching. So today, Linda, what are you excited about? Well, I'm always excited about something. Last yeah. time I was excited about going on vacation, which was not exactly a fiber related thing, but of course it, it was. I went on some fiber journeys, so that was fun. Um, but right now I am very excited about our seasonal celebrations subscription box. Our summer box just came out this week. We mailed those out last weekend and we're always excited to see the reaction from those. And this year um, for the summer season, we decided to use zinnias as our inspiration. And many people will say, oh, can you make color out of zinnias? No, you cannot. No. But they are lovely, <laughs> cheerful flowers that are also super great for pollinators because they last well into October. So we made beautiful zinnia colored and one for the leaves, a uh, mini skein set right here. You can see those. And that was really fun to do. And we paired that. Um, our subscription boxes always have a paired botanical watercolor mm -hmm. item and our friend Christiana of CC Timmerman Arts made a really beautiful zinnia thank you note card with the zinnia. Mm. And it's so pretty. And uh, we paired colors. that. We also have a beeswax item. I didn't bring that with me. We have a little beeswax candle that was in our box this time. Um, but that was really fun. So it's fun to see those go out. And if you happen to be a subscriber and you know what you're going to make with your box, let us know, we love to hear about that. Or if you're looking for ideas, we did do a post with some ideas about what you might make out of a mini set like this. Yeah. Yeah, so that was very exciting. And on my vacation, I also got to use a new knitting tool, which I was very excited about. And if you have not used one of these little guys, I, and you have a lot of I-cord to make for a project, I would encourage you to do so. We got this one from Miss Babs. Um, but it's a little I-cord tool, which allows you to make I-cord really quickly. And we're going to post soon about a finished object that used this. Um, and there'll be a little video in there showing basically how it's used, but it really allows you to just wrap your yarn, wrap your yarn. It's really nice. And so that leads me to the finished object. <laughs> so with our set. <laughs> and the little I-cords. I made this lovely project bag. Uh, it's called the Slip Stitch Knitting Bag, and it is by Sabine Wassman. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. It was really fun to do. Perfect vacation knitting project because it was not too hard to memorize the slip stitch pattern, and um, so it was fun to do while I was sitting out in California with my son and his partner and having fun. Um, and it did take a lot of I-cord. I made a double I-cord because I wanted to be able to draw string it as opposed to just one. So that in other words, you can pull on both ends and have it close up. Yeah, so um, cute. And it's really makes a nice large bag. I actually have two skeins of yarn in here and some other things, uh, odds and ends. But these were two skeins of yarn that I got out on my vacation from the amazing uh, natural dye studio verb for keeping warm in Oakland, California. So if you ever go there, I really encourage you if you're in the Bay Area at all, go check out verb for keeping warm. They really make incredible naturally dyed yarns. I was really interested in this particular colorway. It's mm -hmm. called uh, Marine Layer. It was a special colorway for the Bay Area yarn crawl, which has blues and grays for sort of the bay and the fog and a little bits of orange to represent the Golden Gate Bridge. So I'm gonna have to make a fun project out of these two naturally dyed yarns from Verb. So that's, I kind of cheated. I did excited and also finished object. 
So I just, I had a lot of, of uh, things related to this one particular colorway that I was excited about. So how about yeah. you? What are you excited about, Michelle? Well, one quick excitement that will be over by the time we post this, but today mm -hmm. we're going to be featured on Jolene's Happy Time Craft Cast. Um, so that's another YouTube show where Jolene talks with different people who are in the crafting world. Mm -hmm. and, so not always uh, knitting, not always fiber. Right, right. all kinds of crafts. Um, and I met her through the Craft Industry Alliance, and so I'm excited that we get to talk to her today. Yeah. And I'll put the link in so that if you want to see her podcasts, um, not just us, but all the other ones right. too, it's a lot of fun. Um, she's got a lot of energy. And yeah. So. Great. So that's one quick thing I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. um, the other fiber related thing I'm excited about is the Tour de Fleece, which recently finished. I spun every day except for one day. Wow. I, yeah. I did take one, <laughs> you had one, one break, off day. <laughs> one off day, but I still worked with prepping fiber uh -huh. during that day off. So Oh, that counts. Yeah, it's still related to Tour Absolutely. De Fleece. <laughs> So I did, um, well, I finished the Wooly Lizard. So I think I had the, um, I think I showed the fiber and the work in progress last time. That's really beautiful. Where I did this, mm -hmm. I bought this in um, Colorado on my vacation and then. That's so nice. Yeah, I love it. So I love this those was, colors. It looks very Southwestern. Yeah. You know, the colors do. It really The is. turquoise in there, yeah. So I plied this during Tour de Fleece, and then I did a lot of um, sample spinning. So I was interested to see how some of our own um, fibers would spin mm -hmm. up. Um, so here's one I did in merino bamboo silk. Mm -hmm. So just little ones where I could um, see if I, chain ply this, what would it look like? Mm -hmm. So to test sort of different spinning techniques with our fiber bases. Right. Yeah. Did and you find a technique that, and a combination of base that you thought worked especially well? Um, or that you liked a lot? Well, I like or all they of them. All? <laughs> that is your problem. You do I like know. all of them. I know. All the I things. Just, all the things. <laughs> so, I mean, whether you if you chain ply it, you can keep the colors together and make like long stripes. Um, but if you do um, other kinds of plying, I think I might've showed some of this uh, last month too, but I've been really interested in iris colors. Mm -hmm. So Japanese iris is one of my favorites because it has all the purples and blues and the greens mm -hmm. um, and think some yellows and so I've been doing a lot of dyeing of iris colors and like here's what it looks like on the Cormo um, spun up. Those greens are really pretty. We'll yeah. have to put in a close-up picture because there's kind of a springy yellow green and there's more of an olive really pretty greens. And then what it looks like on Yak mm -hmm. so it's different and I don't think we have one left on the merino bamboo silk, but um, here's one on Polworth silk that I did. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, and here's the yak one, and then when you spin it up, some different ways it might look. Oh yeah, I love those greens on the yak. The yellow and the and the gray of the yak make a really interesting greenish. Yeah. Greenish yellow. I really like that. Yeah. Once you spin it up too, it's so mm -hmm. more subtle mm -hmm. with the grays in there. Yeah. Beautiful. I just love that. And then another thing we've been working on, I say the Royal We, because really Michelle's been doing <laughs> most of this testing. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried dyeing your own yarn, either with chemical dyes or natural dyes, but often people will recommend microwaving as a way of steaming and setting the colors. And we weren't sure, we typically would steam in the traditional way, you know, over simmering water, um, but we were interested to know if microwave steaming would work because some people prefer that, they don't really have a steamer basket or set up. 
So what did you find there, Michelle? In our hand dyeing classes, we often get the question, can I steam my skein in the microwave? And we have always said, we have no idea. We've never done it. But yesterday, a friend told me that she has done it and she described her process. So I did a little test. This one was steamed in our steam pot. This one was steamed in the microwave. I used the same dye materials on both of them. That included matter, fustic, and some little sprinkles of marigolds. So the first test is, do they make a similar color? The steamed one in our normal steaming doesn't look so dark. I wonder if it got burnt in the microwave. That's interesting. But the other colors look similar to me. Ooh. Oh, that's gorgeous. And it's not burnt. It was just darker red, I think. Anyway, so that's the one that was done in the microwave. And this one was done in our regular steam bath. Now I will say I may not have had the exact amount on both skeins, but I tried to do them in a similar way. Yep. And the color rendition looks pretty similar. Where the matter and the fustic come together, very similar colors. The second test will be if we rinse them, does the water come off? No, <laughs> the water will come off. If we rinse them, does the color come off? So what I do is a quick rinse and then we let them dry. So I will put some water in a bucket. So after the rinse, initial rinse, the colors are very similar. So now we let them dry and the next test will be once they're dried and we wash them if the color remains and then the final test will be light fast testing. So stay tuned. Here are those two skeins that we tested one with regular steaming process and the other one with the microwave steaming. And the intensity of the colors is pretty similar. I did not put these on exactly the same um, on both, but I used the same dye materials that we had after a class. And actually the yarn looks a little happier in the microwave version than the steaming version. but both of them will knit up just fine. So what did you find there, Michelle? It works just fine. I was kind of skeptical, but <laughs> um, it seems to work fine. So we learned this technique um, from our friend Beth. Mm -hmm. who, she does that with her alpaca right, fiber. She does that, um, and so you can put it in the microwave for two minutes, let it rest, for two minutes and then heat it again for two more minutes and mm -hmm. it's all wrapped up in the plastic after mm -hmm. you've dyed it so the steam can build up can and build the heat up. Mm -hmm. um, and I will show the outcomes mm -hmm. from that test but and we'll um, probably light fast test them too 
just oh, yeah. to make sure that the steaming method doesn't affect the light fastness. But the colors look identical and the feel, that was another question we had right. is would somehow the microwaving change the hand of the fiber, but it, it doesn't seem to, to us anyway, it feels the right. same. And washing, washing seems the same. The wash fast. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, with natural dyes, it does seem <laughs> off brand or something <laughs> to use yeah. a microwave right. when you're using natural <laughs> dyes. So for us, most of the time we'll do steaming, Traditional steaming. Um, traditionally, but it can work if you're yeah. in a hurry. So. Yeah. So good to know. Yeah. That's great. Another thing sort of in the dye area to keep your eye out for is um, our good friend Jean Haley from Jean Haley Dye and Design was here recently for a little bit of a dye, dye retreat, dye retreat day. Yeah. Um, and Michelle got to interview her and we'll put a little snippet in here, but for the full interview to hear her experience becoming a natural dyer and tips that she has for folks, um, you'll want to check out um, another post that we'll make with that interview exclusively probably next week. Yeah, it was fun sitting down and talking to her about her history and yeah. how she got into dyeing. Stuff, yeah, so. very cool. Yeah. Uh, and then I learned that there was this thing called natural dyes and my head went, what? <laughs> What do you mean I can do this with plants? Yeah. I've been working on environmental programs my entire adult life. Yeah. And so it just fit. I was like, of course I'm going to learn how to do this. I decided to work on, um, you know, sometimes it can be hard to figure out what's your next project. And one way that I approach that because uh, I'm a very practical person, as I think of, well, what kind of sample do we need for the studio? And we had been talking about how with our Pure Merino Sport, which we really love knitting with, and I think when we got it, it was in the fall, and we were dyeing and knitting in the fall and winter, so we made some vests and things like that, but we didn't really have a shawl sample mm -hmm. in the Sport Weight Merino, except, uh, I guess I made the artist shawl, but that's such a big shawl. We realize yeah. not a lot of people are going to do a six skein giant shawl. No. Uh, so we wanted a, a like a two skein shawl. And I found a pattern by someone who I mentioned last time, Helen Kennedy, who I think is a really wonderful knitwear designer who likes to use mosaic uh, techniques for color work. And I really like that too. And so I am working on her shawl called Always Be Brave which is a really nice mosaic pattern. It makes a kind of asymmetric, you know, boomerang shaped shawl. And so um, light too. it's nice and light, but it's more substantial than the fingering weight. So it'll be really warm. Yeah. And it, I used um, our natural color of Pure Merino. And then I used for the variegated, it's our Monet's Garden. And I like this pattern because partway through, your main color and your contrast color switch right here. So the little chain detail goes from being variegated to white. And I think that adds a lot of interest. It's been really fun to knit, it's going really fast. And so this will be a shop sample that we have for our fall shows. Great, I love that. Thanks. What are you working on? Well, I can show you a finished object which is my exact opposite cow. Beautiful. Yes, I think I showed the yarn. Maybe because the yarn, it's hand spun, right? right? The Cut yarn the was rainbow. my hand spun rainbow. Yeah, and I showed that so either pretty. last time or the time before that I was working on it from Kim Dye's yarn. Mm -hmm. So I finished this and I just love it. Um, you can wear it this way to the side. It has that little opening. Yeah, so a little opening. Lays. It really makes it lay nicely. Yeah. And there's, I like that. Or you could wear it like, like this. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a little collar. That is so cute. It's really adorable. And it's a free pattern. It's a free pattern? A new pattern? A new pattern. Yeah. Yes. Also from Nitty, right? Yes. That's, yeah, the um, Always Be Brave shawl is also a free pattern 
from Nitty. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Nitty Magazine. We should all be supporting them because they are wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is yeah. so cute. I can't wait to make one of those. I think the color combinations will be fun. Yeah, to play you can with. do any kinds of color. I like the hand spun because of the change in mm -hmm. striping. But two solid colors yeah, that are different. Yeah, like a I high think. contrast could be really fun. Or your favorite yeah. sports team, you know, alternating colors you could oh, do. that would be fun. Yeah. You could do a whole set for your family. Yeah, you could, right. <laughs> your kids in college. Yeah, different, uh, different sports teams. <laughs> that would be fun. Although I have to say, both of my kids went to colleges, not the same college, that were mm -hmm. like gold and black. Yes. And I really don't like knitting with black very much. It was not yeah. like an exciting color combination. <laughs> Purdue and Iowa. No offense to any Purdue and Iowa fans. Love them, but their None color. taken. I was a Purdue girl. Their colors are not the most exciting, exciting to knit with, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that one's done. And then I sort of ran into a brick wall with my knitting mojo lately. And... Um, there are lots of things I want in it, mm -hmm. and then I would get started, and oh, it just didn't feel right, or I'm not sure. Um, so I started on one top, doing some swatches. Um, that yeah. looks like more pure merino with Surrey silk. Well, this is another kind of silk, Ito's silk with Surrey silk. Oh, okay, two so, silks. Two silks. Mm -hmm. Um, right. So I wanted to see what that would look. Here's two Surrey silks together of mm -hmm. two different colors. That's just nice to and see. fluffy. Oh, yeah. it's so light. Too. They're so light. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. I think it would be a fun top. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. I went to knitting group last week and Luann, one of our members, <laughs> had a finished object that was, um, kind of a, it was a, a kimono, show, right? Kimono, I like I think it was thing. called a kimono. Yeah, you put your arms through it. Does it, was, it button underneath or it's seamed? It was seamed. Seamed under the arms. Um, okay. But it was just this rectangle that was closed at the two ends mm -hmm. like sleeves. So simple to knit, no yeah. shaping or anything. Yeah, and the back had a beautiful um, cable pattern. Mm -hmm. It was just so pretty and I thought, well, maybe that's what I want to do. So then I took some pure merino mm -hmm. and I put Surrey silk with it mm -hmm. um, to see if I started doing like the little oh, false the, cables. Will the cables show up? Yeah. Is it enough? And then I realized I have done several projects in pure merino <laughs> and Surrey silk. I don't really need to do another one or not, do I? <laughs> well, it Maybe. depends if you love it. You have to love what you're making. Yeah. Be I do love it because it's so soft. <laughs> But I thought maybe I should use some of the fiber that I'm spinning mm -hmm. now. Um, so I've been processing and spinning up some thin. We'll be back. Yes. <laughs> and so then the other thing I've been doing is swatching with our new um, hook to hanger. Oh yes, this is something we are excited about as well. We should have probably talked about that in our excitement At the very feature. Beginning, yeah. But it's nice to end with that because this is really an exciting new development. Right. So Hoof to Hanger is a fiber mill in Bridgman, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I um, had posted a separate video a while back visiting their fiber mill. So mm -hmm. I'll link it again below. Yeah, if you want to see what um, their mill is like, yeah. and meet Rick and Anna. Yeah, and you can see inside their store, they have a boutique. Boutique? Boutique. Boutique. Mm -hmm. As well. <laughs> um, so we're going to have two new bases with them. One is a merino silk, and I have been swatching with this. Um, it's kind of a uh, take off on our summer sunset with some little subtle yeah, different colors. That's pretty. Which I love. I love that too. Um, and then the other one is a merino yak silk. Let's see. This is in DK? DK. Yeah. Right. Because we DK. had a DK merino silk, but we're substituting. This will be a new base that will take the place of our old right. merino silk. And this um, has more merino yes. and less silk, so it'll. I think it'll be better for garments too. Yes, the it'll other one was a little bit 
less. Less, yeah. and it also helps support a local fiber mill, which is really the key to the fiber shed. So we're glad to be able to do that and find a local fiber mill that we can source from. Yeah, so that's great. And then the other one is Merino EX so I fingering. And I started oh my gosh. working on this. This is so beautiful. Um, so this would be a two skein shawl. This is, I am not remembering the pattern. Oh, there. well, you can put it back. You yeah. can put it in the notes for the show. I will put it in the notes for the show. That stitch, um, I don't know if they call it a shell stitch or whatever. It's so pretty. Yeah. Hold it up closer so that yeah, you can see. Yeah, it's really so, pretty. So, so pretty. So I yeah, thought it would be that fun. variegated yarn. Yeah, mm, to so use nice. a variegation and then against the blue spruce. Mm hmm um, and the blue spruce on the yak comes out a much richer, deeper yes, green. Yes, it's so nice. I yeah. love that color combination. And this variegated one, we'll put a close-up picture in it, has some oranges and pinks, It's but very yeah. subtle. It, it looks so beautiful with that blue spruce. I yeah. love it. So that's going to be fun. And this So shawl, do you think you're going to make this shawl after swatching? Or do you think that's what's going to be your next project? I think it may be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, the shawl itself, I believe it's a free pattern and it's in um, a bigger, fluffier weight. So mm -hmm. I wanted to see what it would look see like in look fingering. Like. Yeah. That maybe it'd be more like a shawlette or uh -huh. something around your neck yeah. and shoulders and yeah. not as big. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. So we'll stay tuned stay and tuned. see what happens with that and see if I get my knitting mojo back. <laughs> well, we hope you get back or keep your knitting mojo or your crocheting mojo. And we hope you let us know what you think of the show, what questions you have, other things you'd like to hear us talk about. We love to hear from you and love to connect with you at events. Look at our events page if you want to see where we're going to be locally in Chicago and in the Indianapolis area. So we'll see you guys soon.